This could be the best thing I've ever done. I traveled to Estonia with my dad, Simon. He was an army diver and later a commercial diver, so he's a great dive buddy for this adventure. I'd seen a video of some guys ice skating on a frozen lake with concrete ruins beneath, so I did my research. It was Rumu, an ex-Soviet hard labor camp in operation from the 1930s to 2010, when it was abandoned and nature reclaimed it. Contacting a few websites, I eventually found Rasmus, my guide for the day, and Daniel, his assistant. We get the huge floating platform into place and get all the gear ready. The lake was massive. It was so much bigger than I expected. Beneath all this water lies the prison grounds. Imagine how much there is to explore. We arrived at the dive site. I am so excited right now. Ah. We got kitted up and it was time to explore below. Immediately, we plunge into a sunken world. We followed Rasmus as he guided us along the prison wall. It's hard to imagine that the last prisoner left this place as recently as 2010. Until then, men would walk between these walls, overlooked by prison guards and lit by lamplight. We float past a lonely perch and fallen sections of the wall, lamps hanging silently, no longer out of reach. Rusted iron stairs, once used by guards to check the perimeter, lay motionless. Tadpoles and freshwater seagrass cover the floor. I find a bottle, half submerged in silk. We swim toward our first building. It was the prison garage, used for storing and maintaining vehicles. It's easy to forget that for over 80 years, this was a working prison, designed to keep men from escaping. Rumu is a quarry designed for hard labor. Throughout spring, summer, autumn and winter, men were made to dig the limestone grounds. Leaving the building, huge sections of concrete lay on the floor. This was a concrete panel from a demolished building. I don't know what this area used to be, but I floated past a welding oven used to melt lead. We were led to the bomb shelter. Well, at least they think it's a bomb shelter. No one knows for sure. It felt like a James Bond set, a wrecked submarine. Operating under the Soviet Union and the culture of secrecy, hard factual information isn't well known about Rumu. A lot of the information is hearsay and anecdotes twisted over time. So we just come up from the first dive and it was absolutely amazing. It was beyond my expectations. I had so much fun down there. We're on our way now to another part of the quarry where there's a magical forest and the pump station. So we're gonna dive through the forest, into the pump station and up through the building, exiting through the roof of the pump station. It's gonna be awesome. I can't wait to get back in the water. Let's do it. Too. Dropping back into Rumi, this new spot had a different feeling. Sinking down amongst the magic forest, I felt like I was entering a Tim Burton film. Naked trees stretching like skeleton fingers out of the prison floor. Were the trees alive or dead? They were zombies, repurposed for the underwater world. I thought this was an endless twisting cable, but it was a wooden branch.
Leaving the forest, a building emerged in the distance. It was the power supply for the old pump station. Further along lay an old building, roof missing. It was a barracks used for odd jobs and storage. Swimming above its twisted shell, objects lay littered on the ground, with stories no one will ever know. We entered the main pump station through the window. Rusted machinery everywhere. The main pump room looked like a graveyard, with pump-handled crucifixes silhouetted by surface light. This is how Rumu came to be. This room sucked and pumped the excess water that was created by the limestone quarrying. When the prison shut down, these pumps were turned off. The legend is that Rumu flooded in 10 days. Leaving the building, we passed the old boiler that gave heat to the pump station. Air bubbles trapped in the room find their escape as we float up with them. This pipe is one of many that used to suck out the water from the quarry. We swim through a building to get to the water pressure system in the adjacent building. On top of this ramshackle outpost sat a collection of items discovered by previous divers. We find more items as we pass back over the pump room. And swim between the insect-like legs of the building before making our exit. second dive over and done with it was as amazing as the first dive it was so much fun exploring the magical forest through the pump tower through all the other stuff that this place is hidden underneath the water i've had a ton of fun here with rasmus my dad daniel holding the camera right now it's been great if you want to see how i did this um you can check out the details below in the description box it'll tell you how i got out here who i booked with etc etc you can find these guys on instagram and the rest of it and go and find this adventure